Okay, today we are going to do a very interesting experiment with this setup here. This is called a Bell Lab machine, and it has uh, many, many rods in this, uh, uh, in this uh, setup, and they are connected to each other uh, such that it is actually an approximation to an infinitely long top of the system. Okay? Of course, this system is actually not infinitely long in reality, and uh, uh, in this demonstration, we were wondering what would happen if I excite uh, uh, a propagating uh, pulse on this system, and how this pulse will react to the boundary uh, where we have, can have two different kinds of boundary conditions, which we, as we discussed uh, during the lecture. The first one will be a closed end uh, situation, and the other one will be an open end situation. At the edge of the rods, there are, for instance, a pant such that uh, it, uh, it can actually be light up, uh, brighten up, and uh, you can see the uh, uh, green uh, dots. Uh, so that uh, it increase the visibility of the edge. In the first part of the demo, what I, we are going to do is the following. I am going to uh, fix one end with a clip here, such that this point cannot move. Okay? And uh, we were wondering what will happen uh, to the experimental result if I excite a propagating wave, and how does that compare to the uh, mathematical calculation. So that's immediately do this experiment. So now I'm going to create a mountain. This mountain will go and the, and the approach to this uh, boundary. And you can see that the mountain got refracted. And uh, let's do this uh, experiment again. If you look at this mountain, it does change sign after it passed a fixed end, as we predicted from the mathematics uh, during the class. That is because if I create a mountain, at the edge, it has to be super, uh, uh, it has to be a superposition of a mountain and a valley such that the left and uh, this side is, uh, is actually not moving. The sum of the mountain and valley should be equal to zero, S such that this point never move as a function of time. Okay? Let's take a look at this uh, demonstration again using a valley. So I now will excite the valley, and you can see that this valley becomes a mountain. And interestingly, when this valley touch the other side, which is an open end, it is actually reflected again, as you can see it, and it's still a valley. Let's take a look at the result again. A valley becomes a mountain, and a mountain and becomes a valley. You can see that uh, when Touching the open end, the behavior is different. Uh, it doesn't change sign. Okay? To see this effect more clearly, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to remove uh, uh, this setup here very, very carefully, such that this side is also becoming an uh, open end. Okay? So now I have both ends open. So what is going to happen? is the following. So if I excite a mountain, this mountain will be a mountain again, mountain again, mountain again, and going back and forth. That is actually because when this mountain uh, pass, uh, touch the, the open end, it will not change sign. Okay? As you can see from this demonstration, this mountain is going back and forth. The amplitude is decreasing because this is a realistic system, such that there will be energy dissipation. If I have no energy dissipation, like an idealized system, what is going to happen is that this mountain will go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, over and over again, forever. Right? But in reality, you do see that the amplitude is decreasing as a function of time. Let's also do another version of this experiment to excite the valley. You can see this valley goes back and forth. It's always a valley, it doesn't change sign, as we predicted from the mathematics during the class.